This makeup started off as an intense desire for me to create my own version of a fairy. So I'm going to walk you through the process since it did take quite a bit of time. I, fade away. I started by sculpting out some ideas onto my life cast. And if you want some tips on how to do this, I have a video on how to make prosthetics at home that I will link below. Once I was happy with the forms, I further refined the sculpture and then added textures. Sculpting took me about eight hours over a course of three days. Next, I moved into the molding stage of this whole process, and I used UltraCal 30 as my mold material. UltraCal is pretty widely used in molds as well as in making live casts. And if you want to learn more about the whole process, I do have a more in-depth video on molding as well, which I will link below. After hours and hours of cleaning out the clay and releasing the mold, I ran a batch of gelatin to create my prosthetic. And I just uploaded a video on how to run gelatin in a mold. If you want to check that out, I will link it below. I'm just giving myself all kinds of shout outs in this video. But I made those videos to be helpful and to use as reference. Whenever I apply prosthetics to myself, I always feel like pre-painting the prosthetic is the way to go. You can get really detailed with your paint and it just makes the application process that much faster. I painted this piece using alcohol activated palettes as well as Pax paint. I first went in with a wash of red to the deepest portions of the sculpt. Next I used a white Pax paint to brush over the highest planes of the sculpt. This technique is called dry brushing and it really brings out the dimensions of the prosthetics. And if you're wondering what Pax paint is, it is a one to one ratio of prosate and acrylic paint that was developed by the godfather himself, Mr. Dick Smith. White can sometimes mute the depth, so I just added that red around all of the forehead phalanges and the cheekbones. I don't really know what to call them. It looks like coral. I know a lot of people are going to say it looks like Groot, and I'm okay with that. I love Groot. But uh, yeah, forehead phalanges is what I'm going with. And to the very tips of the phalanges, I added some little red dots because I like dots. I don't know. There's no rhyme or reason to my madness. And now we're finally ready to apply. And by we, I mean I, because you guys aren't here, but I still feel like we're a team, so that's that must be why I say we all the time. Anyway, I fit the prosthetic to my face and applied a thin layer of prose to my forehead. When applying, always work outwards from the center of the face, unless you're going for a lopsided mutant, and then, by all means, do it however you want. I continued laying down the piece by working in sections. I paint on a thin layer of prose, let it dry, and you'll know it's dry when it's clear, and then I'll lay the prosthetic down. I blended the edges by using a mixture of 50% alcohol and 50% spirit gum. This is also a trick from Dick Smith. Moving on into Paint World, aka Paintland, aka where the paint comes to the party, I went ahead and paxed out the rest of the prosthetic as well as the rest of my face. I also invited my airbrush to the party using a white Endura paint from European Body Art to base out the rest of my skin. I used a cream concentrate from OCC around the eyes. I prefer to use cream products around the eyes as opposed to alcohol based colors. I just smudged the red around the eye and then I used some red dots to break up that color concentration. I did tone down the eye a bit by applying a thin layer of the white airbrush paint. I'm trying to continue that theme of dots so I also trailed those dots upwards towards the forehead phalanges. And around the nostrils, in a very Hussar-esque fashion, I added that red cream concentrate again. For the lips, I applied the red yet again and added dots radiating outwards. Then on top of that, I sprayed another layer of the white airbrush paint. To the insides of my lips, I applied the red again and added a few more red dots to define the lips. With a sea sponge and a red face paint, I sponged on a bit of texture to break up the white. Then I applied another layer of the white airbrush paint on top. This technique gives you a really translucent effect to the skin. 
With the red alcohol color, I added lines flowing down from the cheek design. And after taking a step back, I realized I needed some more contour so I wouldn't look so flat and white. So I added a dark red to the airbrush and applied that color where I needed the most contour, mainly the cheekbones, temples, and the inner eye sockets. And finally, I applied a white face paint to my lashes and popped in some red contacts from CamoEyes.com. Anyway, that's going to wrap up this fairy tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I worked really hard on this one, my version of a fairy, from sculpting to molding to running it to painting it to applying it. I mean, it was a lot of, a lot of steps to get here, but I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Thumbs ups are a great way to help support my videos and help support my channel. Also, if you wouldn't mind sharing it on your social media, if you feel the need, that would be great as well. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a great day. Bye. Psst. Hey, hey you. Yeah, you. I see you sticking around for the end of the video. Why don't you check out some other videos? You can always watch how to make a mold or maybe how to run gelatin prosthetics. Go ahead, click on it. You know you want to.